Actually, the Zillinger Ellison syndrome is composed of three components. Markedly elevated is the gastritis and gastricasis secretion, and the person is suffering from peptic ulcer disease, and number three, gastrinoma. Actually, a gastrinoma is a tumor that produces gastrin. Gastrinoma can be in the pancreas or in the duodenal wall, but if they are in the pancreas, they are non beta islet cell tumor. That is, except from the beta islet cells, all the cells of the pancreas can cause a gastrinoma. Gastrinoma can be one, it can be multiple at the time of diagnosis. It may be large, it may be small, it may be benign, or it may be malignant. Malignant means it travels down to other, other organs, invading through the tissues. And uh, if I'm not missing it, two thirds of the gastrinomas are malignant. And usually, the gastrinomas are sporadic. 75% of them are sporadic. Sporadic means they are occasional. Well, actually, gastrinomas can also be associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia, type 1, which make 25 to 30% of the gastrinomas. Men ones is a type of a disease, another disease in which there is neoplasia that is cancer or tumor. Banana malignant that may be the cause of gastrinomas. Now the systems that are affected by ZA syndrome are endocrine, metabolic, you can say, and gastrointestinal tract. Okay, the ZA syndrome can also be called as Pancreatic ulcerogenic tumor syndrome, multiple endocrine neoplasia, partial, and ulcerogenic islet cell tumor. Now let us come to the symptoms of ZA syndrome. Number one is the abdominal pain, which is in 80% of the patients. Diarrhea going to the motions include 70% of the patients heartburn is in 60% of the patients nausea is in 40% of the patients reflex esophagitis that is the inflammation of the esophagus is also in a reasonable number of patients there is vomiting that is not responsive to the standard therapy that is the anti emetic drugs. It's not it does not it just not, does not respond well to the therapy, the vomiting. There is severe weight loss and steatoria can also be seen. These were the symptoms of Sadie syndrome. Now let us talk about some of the pathological findings seen in ZA syndrome. Well there is a gastric triangle that is bounded by bile duct on one side, junction of the second and third portion of the duodenum on the other side and junction of the head and the body of the pancreas on the third side. Actually 90% of the gastrinomas are found in the gastric triangle. 50% of the gastrinomas are in the head of the pancreas and almost 50% in wall of first or second portion of duodenum. As we already said, two thirds of the tumors are malignant. Half of them can produce ACTH, vasoactive intestinal polypeptide, insulin or neurotensin. Actually, some of the patients have a presentation of metastasis, 
with regional nodes to the liver to the bone rarely to peritoneum spleen skin and mediastinum ulcers are commonly multiple for example the duodenal jejunal and gastric ulcers are often multiple gastric and duodenal mucosal or thickening can also occur another distinguishing feature is that the gastrin producing cells in the antrum of the stomach are predisposed to hyperplasia and uh, the histological appearance of sedi syndrome ulcers and the cancer is in appearance to carcinoid the ulcers are similar to carcinoid now let's talk about the treatment of zadi syndrome mm, the treatment is mainly for the ulcers 80 to 85% of the ulcers are treatable and they heal by the use of the drugs and the main point that you should keep in mind that these ulcers when healed can reoccur mm, and more often they reoccur the dosages for the treatment of the ulcers caused by the ZD syndrome are fairly high higher than the treatment of the normal ulcers there is fairly high risk of hypercalcemia in man 1 syndrome so a therapy should be initiated for the cure of the hyperparathyroidism that is causing the hypercalcemia actually the first line treatment is with the proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers can be added so first line will be PPIs and H2 blockers but there are contraindications such as hypersensitivity and retinic effects of H2 blockers drug interactions due to cytochrome P450 stimulation of H2 blockers like somatidine actually the PPIs have no contraindications in a uh, very rare contraindications well actually there are some <coughs> precautions for this treatment these medications such as uh, the renal adjustment should be made and the uh, high dose cimetidine can result in gynecomastia and the proton pump inhibitors can induce a profound and long lasting effect on gastric acid secretion and that is not very beneficial so the bioavailability of the drugs that require low ph for example ketoconazole ampicillin and iron they require low ph for their absorption through the gastric region so ppis are not beneficial when we are using these drugs now we come to the second line drugs such as octreotide which is very very beneficial in regression of the growth of the liver metastasis chemotherapy regimens streptozosin 5 fluorouracil and doxorubicin these three drugs are used in the chemotherapy regimen of zadi syndrome gastrinoma interferon with the combination with in combination with octreotide is very very helpful but interferon alone has limited response